my name is Madison Snyder and I'm a fourth grade teacher at Bonnie Kate Elementary. And I'm Ashley Fleming and I'm a fourth grade teacher at West Hills Elementary. We are so excited to spend some time with you this week. We're going to be reading, talking, and writing together. Miss Fleming and I have video conference to plan this lesson and we are so excited to share it with you. We miss you all and wish we were in the classroom together, but we are so excited that you have joined us today for this virtual classroom. Just like when we read, Don't Believe What You See, some of you may have read this text before. That's okay. We can read this text together with a new purpose. It will help us gain new information and help us become stronger, more fluent readers. I know I have reread several books since school has been closed. I learn new lessons or information each time I read. If this video is hard to understand, feel free to turn the closed captions on, adjust the speed of the video, pause and rewatch again, or pause and discuss with someone in your home. Friends, we've been working so hard to solve some mysteries and we need some more help. For the last two weeks, we've discussed mysteries and puzzles by looking at natural and man-made optical illusions. We're going to use those same sleuth skills we've been talking about with this new text today. Will you continue to help us by being the best, best sleuths around? Remember, to be a good sleuth, you need to gather evidence, ask questions, make your case, and prove it. We're going to be doing each of these things to help us answer the question, why do animals behave the way they do? We will read closely to gather specific text evidence to help us answer that question. We will ask questions to help us dig deeper into the text. We will support our claims or case by using the evidence from the text. And finally, we will work to prove it by presenting our evidence and claims in a clear way. Want to help us solve this mystery? My first question is, what do animals have to do with mysteries and puzzles? That's a great question, Ms. Snyder. So like Ms. Snyder said, today we're going to take a look at this passage, Becoming an Animal Expert. What do you already know about an expert? What are some things you think you must do to become an expert? An expert is someone who knows a lot about a topic. Your school librarian is an expert on books, meaning she knows a lot about books. Take a look at the photographs the author has used to help us understand what an expert is or sees each day at work. Again, this unit is focused on information about why animals behave the way they do. I wonder how this text could relate back to this. I wonder how being an animal expert relates to solving mysteries or puzzles. Let's revisit this at the end of our passage. Feel free to annotate or highlight the text as we are learning today. One of the strategies that we want you to keep in mind as we read through the text is how we can use our knowledge of suffixes to better understand unfamiliar words. You may have previously learned a few suffixes that mean someone who. Some of these suffixes were IST, ER, OR, even IAN. And when they're added to the end of a base word, we know that it means someone who does something. For example, an artist is someone who does art. Or a teacher is someone who teaches. So keep your eyes open for these suffixes in the text. Let's read the first two paragraphs together. Do you like animals? Are you curious about why they do the things they do? If you answered yes to these questions, you might make a good scientist someday. There are many scientists who specialize in the study of animal behavior. These scientists go by many names, doctor, curator, researcher, trainer, zoologist, biologist, and veterinarian, just to name a few. Hmm, 
Let's go back to this first paragraph. Why does the author start with questions? Perhaps the author is trying to persuade us to become animal experts. In the second paragraph, the author mentions some jobs that the scientists can have if they study animal behaviors. What were some of those examples he listed? Good, they're right here in the second paragraph at the end. Now, did you guys notice that some of those jobs use the suffixes that we mentioned before, like the ER and researcher and trainer, or the IAN and veterinarian? Perhaps take a second to box those in on your text. Do you know any other animal expert jobs? As I read this paragraph, I thought about how some of these jobs sound familiar while others don't. Perhaps put a question mark by one of the um, jobs that isn't familiar to you. I'm gonna make sure to read closely to see if the author gives me more information about some of these jobs further in the text. Keep in mind as we read the next few paragraphs that we can sometimes make inferences based on the information that the author is giving us and our prior knowledge. As we continue reading, I want you to think about what new information we are given about animal experts. Go ahead and read paragraph three aloud or to yourself. What new information was the author telling about us about in this paragraph? Right. You might have said that he was talking about becoming a behavior, an animal behavior scientist, and that you have to go right to college. Go ahead and take a minute to find the details that tell more about what you must do while you're in college. Did you underline these words? Studying, hard work, and good grades? Hmm, what could we infer about people who choose to go to college to learn about animals? What do you think, Ms. Snyder? Well, I could infer that they are dedicated because of how much school they must go through to be in their job. They use that auxiliary word, auxiliary verb must, which means it's like a requirement. The text states that some jobs even require advanced degrees. Mm, I think dedicated is a good word to describe these students while they're in college. I might also say that these students are passionate because they do work so hard and they go for extra time. I love that word choice of passionate. You're right. People who become animal experts must be passionate and love what they do. Thanks. All right, let's go ahead and take a minute to read further in the next two paragraphs. Think about the next steps that animal scientists take. So what are your choices or next steps to becoming an animal expert? Let's underline them in the passage together. One of them was that we could become a professor. A professor teaches others about animals or maybe even teaches an future animal experts. Let's also underline where it says that you can research animals and teach classes. Um, I think if you're going to research animals, 
that there are some things that you might have to research about the specific animals. This is a good science connection here. A lot of scientists have to study different behaviors, which kind of goes back to our essential question. And we've talked about adaptations and how animals have to use illusions. I bet scientists had to study those things over time and research them further. They may also decide to write articles. Who do they write the articles for? I wonder who reads them. I bet they have to think about their audience when they're writing those articles. All of these kind of remind me of why many times in school and in reading class, we read, talk, and write about information and texts. Now, go ahead and put your eyes on that last paragraph. We read specifically about veterinarians. This might be one of the jobs that is most familiar to us. Can you describe a veterinarian's job? If you are unsure of how to describe a veterinarian, the author does a great job right here in the text. He also calls a veterinarian an animal doctor. Let's go ahead and read the last paragraphs of this passage. You may read them aloud or to yourself. Read carefully to find out more specific information about where animal scientists might work and even some that have become famous for their work. Then we'll come back together to discuss them. Remember, if you didn't finish reading all of these paragraphs, you can always pause the video if you're watching it online. Um, let's take a look at the top paragraph of this page. It talks about some other places animal scientists may work. What were some of those places? Go ahead and underline them in your text. You may have visited some of these places and or you might have read about them, watched a video about them, or learned about them in another way. Let's talk about some of them now. The first one that we could talk about is zoos. You may have taken a field trip to our local zoo or visited with your family. Did you know that they need animal experts to work here to understand all the animals and their behaviors there? What about aquariums? Now, these are not the small tanks you have in your home, but the large animal aquariums that are in large buildings where you can visit and see all kinds of animals that live or um, have water as part of their natural habitats. I know we have a Ripley's Aquarium close by in Gatlinburg, or I have visited one close by in Chattanooga that was quite large and had a lot of large animals. I think there's even one in Atlanta that's close. What about those nature preserves? Do you know anything about those, Ms. Snyder? Yeah, these might be the least familiar to you, but we actually have several close by. To preserve something means that we're going to um, save that, or um, this is actually a place where you can observe nature um, away from houses and developments and things like that. So plants, animals, and habitats are preserved or saved. Um, one that's close by is Imes Nature Center or even like national parks like Cades Cove. You know, Miss Fleming, aren't there some cool zoos, aquariums, and national parks showing live stream videos since everyone's out of school? I think I have heard about that. Boy, that would be interesting to see if we could find some of those. All right, let's take a look in the next paragraph. 
The author gave us some, or gave us several examples of famous animal behavior specialists, such as, what was that first one, Miss Snyder? Charles Darwin. It says he was famous for studying how animals evolve. Now, I may be unfamiliar with the word evolve, but the author helps me out. He or she knew I may not have heard of this word before. So the author tells us in the text exactly what evolves mean, means by using a comma and giving us the definition, comma or change over time. So evolve means or a change over time. Good. I also read next about um, Rachel Carson. She was a famous ecologist. What word do you think of when you hear that, ecologist? What other words do you know that have E-C-O in them? I thought about ecosystems. And actually, when I researched it, an ecologist studies how animals interact with their environment. Think about food webs that you have created in science class. She is also a famous marine biologist. Marine would be water life, bio means life, and ology means the study of life. So she studies the life of these water animals. Who do we read about next? Next we read about Jane Goodall. She is a famous be animal behavior scientist who studied chimpanzees in Africa. What kind of things do you think she studied or observed? Hmm. Since she is an animal behavior scientist, she must be observing how they interact with one another or how they act on their own. Oh, that sounds a lot like that essential question we talked about. Hmm. The last one we read about was Steve Irwin. Now, he worked in an Australian zoo, and he actually has children that followed in his footsteps and studied animals too. They even continued to give lectures and conduct interviews on the importance of taking care of wildlife. Man, Miss Fleming, wouldn't it be fun to further research, research some of these people? Yeah, I definitely think so. Well, looking back at the last paragraph, we see the author's purpose just like in the first paragraph. It seems as though he is persuading us to perhaps become animal experts and make some new discoveries. Now, when I read the last paragraph, this phrase right here, making new discoveries, makes me think back to our essential question. Why do animals behave the way they do? What connection does this make you think of? I thought about how hard it is for animals to communicate with humans and how we can't always understand their behaviors unless we take the time to study and observe them, like so many of these scientists that we read about do. Um, I can't wait to see what more information you and I find about these many types of animal scientists. After the passage, we see a few sleuth work activities. Ms. Snyder and I have embedded these activities as well as others into a tic-tac-toe board. We're gonna go through the board quickly together to explain some exciting extensions you can do with this text and topic. All right, guys, so throughout the lesson, Ms. Fleming and I kind of mentioned some activities, some ideas that you could possibly do with this text. Now, this tic-tac-toe board will be in the KCS at home packet as a tic-tac-toe board. You have nine options of activities, as you see here. We're, we're going to go through all nine. You can try to complete three in a row, three down, three across, or three diagonal. So you don't have to do all of these or even three. Maybe you just want to select your favorite one. That's okay too. The first option is um, morphology. You can go on a suffix hunt. Miss Fleming mentioned all those suffixes that have the uh, meaning someone who, I-S-T-E-R-O-R -E or I-A-N. Search for those words in the text. You can even challenge yourself by looking for those words in other texts that you read. Next, 
you can ask questions. Think of a person who works with animals. Create a at least five questions to interview them. Use what you've learned from becoming an animal expert. You can challenge yourself by having someone in your home pretend to interview you, the animal expert, using your own questions. Next, we can do a noun hunt. Remember, a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. You can sort them into common and proper nouns, and you can even challenge yourself by finding any pronouns or nouns that replace noun, nouns that replace nouns and identify who or what they are replacing. The next three activities on your tic-tac-toe board are making your case. This is where we're going to create a paragraph that is more centered on an opinion. Last week we worked on a summary, so this is a little bit of a change, but you can still use some of those same ideas. Create a, a paragraph about your opinion on whether you think you would make a good animal behavior scientist one day. You can gather some of the evidence from your passage that we read today to support your opinion. Remember, you may have had a graphic organizer in class that you use for opinion writing, like the Oreo, opinion, reasons, evidence, and opinion again. This just helps us keep some organization to our paragraph. You also could just create the graphic organizer and add in those and maybe work on a paragraph later. Try to share it with someone in your home. The next activity is a prove it activity. Reread paragraph seven and choose one of the famous animal behavior specialists to research with an adult. Create a visual or poster of what you've learned. When you're going on to do your research, remember to check back to the KCS at home page or maybe your school's library and media page for some search engines. The last activity on this row is also a prove it activity where you can summarize. You can make an inference just like Ms. Snyder and I modeled in the passage about what kind of person would become an animal expert. Remember to use that text evidence to support your inference in your paragraph. And finally, in the last row, we um, can do some research. We mentioned when we were reading that several zoos offer video streams of their animals. So there are some listed there and there are plenty others that you can find. You can watch some animals and make observations about their behaviors and habitats. Then you can make your case. You can record yourself using someone's phone, iPad, computer, and advertise animal experts and maybe try to persuade others to become animal experts just like our passage did. They tried to get us to want to become animal experts. And finally, we have a science connection we can do. Paragraph seven states, these scientists understood and continue to understand that all living creatures are linked together on our planet. That made us think of food webs. So you can create a food web that contains an animal you have read about recently. Be sure to include at least five examples. Now remember, you can do one, you can do a tic-tac-toe, three in a row, um, but we're gonna be doing this for two weeks. So you've got plenty of time and lots of options. Thank you so much again for joining us at KCS at Home. Be sure to visit the KCS resource page or your school's library and media page to help you. Today we have read to answer the question, why do animals behave the way they do? We've learned how you can become an animal expert. Then you will be able to explain why animals behave the way they do. There are several jobs we can work toward to explain animal behaviors. You guys are doing such a great job working along with us as we all learn together to review materials. We look forward to learning with you all again soon. My name is Madison Snyder from Bonnie Kate Elementary. And I'm Ashley Fleming from West Hills Elementary. And we want to say a special thank you to Ashley Croft, the ELL teacher at Spring Hill Elementary, for helping us with this lesson planning and packet planning. Thanks for joining us. See you guys next week.